fermenting gut. I always imagined that fibre was just like bulk, it was like eating cardboard, but that's kind of not the case. So the fibre thing is a big requirement and thinking about the diversity of the flora in your gut, how do you, or do we need to increase the diversity of that flora and does the paleo keto diet do that or what can we do alongside of that to increase the diversity that's going to keep us okay more okay healthy? well uh, let me just quickly explain how the gut works briefly now the upper gut is meant to be a near sterile digesting gut like a dog or a cat and that allows us to deal with meat and fat the lower gut is meant to be a fermenting gut um, and that allows us to get the goodness from the fibre in food. So the lower gut is like a horse or a cow um, where they ferment. Um, and that is the perfect situation. Now that, from an evolutionary perspective, has been incredibly successful. It means we've been able to access a wider variety of food than any other mammal. So we can survive you know, as um, uh, Inuit Indians just eating whale or fish meat, or we can survive in um, um, uh, India on a largely vegetarian diet. So that gut has had great advantages. But problems arise when we eat foods that are high in sugar and carbohydrates, because we then get a fermenting upper gut, where there should be no fermentation. The upper gut should be a near sterile acidic gut for meat and, um, and fat. And upper fermenting gut brings all sorts of problems. Why? Because, first of all, the goodness in food, many of the vitamins and minerals, go to feed the microbes instead of feeding you our bodies. So when I do nutritional tests on patients with upper fermenting gut, they're always deficient, low in minerals, low in B vitamins. Secondly, they ferment to produce toxic products like alcohol, delactate, hydrogen sulfide, all of which poison the body. And I reckon that foggy brain is a cardinal symptom of upper fermenting gut poor short-term memory, can't think clearly. And the third problem are the microbes themselves. These are not evolutionary correct microbes. They're relatively new to the human body and we haven't seen them. Often they're yeast, uh, bacteria like Helicobacter pylori and maybe others as well. Now what we know about these microbes is they very easily get from the gut into the bloodstream. That is called bacterial translocation. Viruses will get in there too, and so will yeast. And there is potential for them to drive inflammatory reactions at distal sites. Now, is this infection? Is this allergy? Is this a pro-inflammatory influence? I don't think it matters what we call it. The point is those microbes are in our body and causing problems. Um, in fact, there's some lovely work done in um, Japan by a researcher called Nishihara, who's demonstrated if you've got fermenting gut, you've got fermenting brain. And in the brain, those microbes can ferment normal neurotransmitters like adrenaline and dopamine into nasty things like LSD, amphetamine-like substances. And he believes that um, that explains psychosis, such as schizophrenia or manic depression. It's like having a dose of LSD or cocaine several times a day. And guess what? The most effective treatment for psychiatric conditions is the ketogenic diet. So, um, the idea of the paleo-ketogenic diet is we starve those little microbes, those little wretcheds in the upper gut by not eating sugar and starches. And we feed the friendly microbes in the lower gut with fibre. Now those friendly microbes will ferment the fibre and that does a lot of good things. First of all, it nourishes the lining of the, up, of the lower gut directly. Secondly, it produces short chain fatty acids, which are basically fats. So that helps nourish the body. And thirdly, they program the immune system. Now, if you, if you think of the immune system as our standing army, what you want to do is you want to give it some practice against some um, non-aggressive um, uh, outsiders. And that's what they are, they're non-aggressive outsiders. So it keeps the immune system on its toes. It teaches it to recognize the good ones and therefore anything that's different, it will attack. So no, fiber is not just the bulking itself. Yes, it does bulk up the stool and as you rightly point out, um, a low fiber diet will result in constipation, but that is not its primary cause. Fiber is a highly um, bioactive material which is essential for normal, rude human health.